Okay, uh, now, like I said before, um, we're going to go into this tone section here. And what this is, it splits the signal into a high-pass filter, um, which should look very familiar to you. Um, there's that, and uh, there's that, and there's, uh, well, I guess that kind of does a high-pass filter too, um, in a very different way. Um, but anyways, this is uh, a high-pass filter and a low-pass filter, and then a knob that changes between those. So no matter where you put the knob, you're always filtering something. And that's what gives uh, the Big Muff that kind of mid-scoop. And is one of the big problems that I honestly have with the Big Muff. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I love bypassing the tone control. Um, you can put a knob there for more mids and stuff. Um, but overall, um, this is a completely passive tone circuit and cuts out a good amount of volume. And that's actually what this stage is for. Is uh, It's a recovery based off of this tone stack that's put in. Um, so what I'm going to do on this uh, before I elaborate is this is what I'm going to do to the tone stack. That's it. I'm going to just completely remove it and... Um, It'll give me a nice volume increase and give me a nice uh, flat response based off of what I'm doing uh, for these capacitors um, and, uh, you know, these. And basically everything, it's not um, dependent on this filter at all. If, you know, I want to adjust anything, I can do it, you know, post-wise with an EQ. Um, I, th I don't want this tone stack here. Um, every time I have a big muff with the tone bypass, I always flip the bypass. I leave it on. I'm not going to put a switch there, I'm just going to put it internal, um, just always have that tone off. And then that gives me um, that extra knob space uh, to do this mod. And um, I just realized that I want it to be like that, that way, the right way that I turn it. Um, it'll give me... Um, it doesn't make that much of a difference, it's just a matter of the direction that you turn it. Um, I, I'd like to have it like that. Um, so, anyways, uh, I'm just going to bypass this tone circuit. You don't have to. Uh, there are other things that you can do to this tone circuit. Um, you could uh, change the values. And um, with this high-pass filter, a larger cap and a smaller resistor uh, will decrease uh, the uh, treble on the low setting uh, a lot better. Or um, you could uh, in, uh, decrease this cap and increase this resistor, which will give you a bit more trouble. Um, similarly, on, on this low-pass filter, um, if you wanted to, you could uh, easily make a smaller cap and a larger resistor uh, to decrease the trouble on that. Um, you want to, it's basically the reverse of this. And it'll, uh, playing around with that will give you different, uh, sweeping tone controls. Um, there are other things that you can do. You could, uh, put another knob on there for mids, which would be a variation of this high-pass filter. Um, and you can look that up online if you want to do that. Um, but really, I just like to leave it flat and let my EQ do it. Um, and then after that, uh... We're going to go into this capacitor that I talked about um, that I'm going to switch. Uh, so I have my extra switch from my other knob that I'm going to do. And so switch here. Uh, and then that goes into this. And it's just going to be a cap here. And then cap here. And that's a uh, really uh, cool cap to do. It's um, your base uh, coupling cap, but it also forms a high-pass filter uh, with this resistor right here. So um, that's one of the reasons why these two are also good spots, because they actually are um, uh, bonafide filters. Um, but the other reason is, like I said, um, this will control your uh, base frequency going through the entire circuit. Um, 
this will compensate for that um, and do it afterwards and just for this final booster before this final booster stage and um, I, I wanted to change that cap here and not here because uh, mainly uh, it uh, acts like a high pass filter with the volume pot and it's a good thing to uh, leave that where it is and have your volume pot kind of do its work and not have to worry about um, the different way that different ways that it'll filter with the volume pot. Um, I like to leave that alone and do it here and then have this whole thing and then boost it into that and it'll uh, give me a different sound that I want so if I say I want to change this I'm probably going to do it um, where I'm going to reduce this on one and increase it with the other so I have a basic base cut and a base boost um, other, different than what's stock um, and uh, depending on where this knob is it's a good useful thing to do and I don't have to add another knob, I can just do a switch between those two capacitors. And, like I said, there's the resistor here, uh, which helps form a low pass filter, but it also, I'm, I mean, it pretty much does the same thing as um, this resistor and uh, this resistor. So, um, it's a good thing to leave alone. Um, and then, uh, there's this resistor, here, uh, which goes to 9 volts, and then you have your final booster stage, uh, and this is a uh, stage that I gen generally want to leave alone. Um, if you wanted to, um, you could increase this and it'll give you uh, more gain um, and or you could uh, decrease it and it'll give you uh, less gain um, or uh, you could likewise uh, change this and reduce it for more gain or uh, increase it for less gain but I like to leave alone it's a solid booster um, and I don't want this section to be a tone shaper. It's not supposed to be a tone shaper. Um, it's just meant to boost after the tone knob, and it's a nice uh, way to do that. And then you have your volume pot, which is the same thing as the stain pot, but on this, uh, you don't put the resistor there because if you turn it all the way down, it, you know you want no sound on that. Um, and then it goes into the output here. So, uh, that's basically the Big Muff circuit. Um, I'm sorry if I ran through the last bit really fast, um, but it's, uh, really, um, this is the section that is usually messed with the most. Um, if I do do anything, uh, to the latter stages, I'll tell you, and I'll explain why, but, it's generally good practice just to kind of let those be. Um, so when it comes down to where to mod, I showed you where I'm going to mod, um, but that doesn't mean that's where you have to. Um, pretty much everything on the Big Muff circuit is moddable. Um, there's hardly anything that you can do that'll really hurt the Big Muff. Um, you're not going to destroy it um, unless you really, really mess it up. Um, so... There's uh, lots of places that you can do. Um, like I explained, uh, these caps, caps are usually the best uh, places to go if you want to change uh, the general tone of things. Um, caps are the tone shapers. Uh, resistors just kind of do their job. Uh, resistors, on the other hand, are good um, kind of gain shapers. Uh, and the Big Moth Circuit is very good with its uh, gain stages. Um, and kind of sets it up very nicely. Um, there's the Creamy Dreamer mod. Um, I I think one part of it is to uh, modify these. I don't want to do that, and I explained why when I drew up the original common emitter amplifier. Um, I You really want uh, your gain to be dependent on these two uh, resistors here. 
and you don't want it to uh, be dependent on the gain of this. If you do do the Creamy Dream mod, which I absolutely hate, it's one of my least favorite mods, it probably is my least favorite mod uh, to do on the Big Muff circuit, um, and it just sounds terrible in my opinion. Um, but if you do the Creamy Dream mod, um, a good thing to do would be uh, maybe uh, play around with these uh, transistors uh, because when you do um, the when you take out this emitter resistor um, and have it go straight to ground, uh, you're really dependent on the gain of the transistor. So different transistors will do different stuff. Um, if you don't remove it, uh, the transistors uh, don't really change the feel that much. The, um, a lot of people say they prefer this transistor, this transistor. It really doesn't make that much of a difference in such a high gain circuit, in such a circuit where uh, your gain is dependent on, on these two resistors and not as much on the transistor itself. The transistor does its job of amplifying, but not to the specific properties of that transistor. Um, as long as the gain isn't too low, it really um, it really won't make that huge of a sound difference. Barely noticeable, if noticeable at all. Um, so that's uh, pretty much it. That's all I want to touch up on with that. Um, there are also different mods that you can do, uh, and those are feedback mods. You could uh, connect different points um, anywhere, uh, usually uh, from like the emitter of one resistor into the base of another, and that'll feedback the whole thing. And uh, it's definitely not a mod for everybody. It's not a mod for me. It's not something that I want to do. It adds that kind of like droning note. Um, it works kind of like an oscillator of sorts uh, when you do that and uh, it's a cool thing maybe put a momentary switch on there if you do do that and then you can you know engage that uh, put a pot on there to control the amount of feedback that you're doing and uh, yeah so that's that's one thing that you can do but I don't recommend it um, personally uh, unless you're uh, in a crazy uh, band that uh, in which that could be useful, um, uh, a noise band, um, and want something to do, uh, the feedback mod to, um, but there are different points in which you can do that, and that's, um, pretty much it, I mean, like I said, everything can be modded, um, if you're building a Big Muff from scratch, I strongly recommend breadboarding it and playing around with your circuits that way, um, that way you're not soldering and desoldering, that or at least um, maybe solder just uh, some basic wires coming out of the holes and then uh, use alligator clips to kind of clip in your different sounds and then turn on, you know, put the battery in, turn it on and try it out and then take the battery out again when uh, you're messing with the circuit some more. And then after that, you can uh, easily remove the jumpers and put in uh, your, your values that you want. Um, so yeah, experiment, experimentation's key, I'm going to experiment a little, and uh, I'll show you what I come up with uh, in a latter video, but for that, I just wanted to run basically through the structure of a Big Muff as uh, concise and as non-confusing as possible, and I hope that I did that, um, and I hope that this was informative and that it will help you a lot in your Furiture mods, and also just basically understanding the structure of the Big Muff. Um, and understanding what the Big Muff does and why it does it um, is very key to your mods besides just um, reading a tutorial online saying do this and you have no idea why and no idea why it's doing it or literally what it's doing. Um, so yeah, drawing out the schematic and literally drawing out the mod ideas that you have, it's invaluable. Um, and that's all I really have to say for right now. Uh, so I hope that you enjoyed this, and I'll be back later to actually work on the Big Muff. So I'll see you then.